Ooh, this is exciting, isn't it? Very exciting. I am streaming on YouTube. I've never done this before. But we'll give it a shot and see what happens. I don't know if uh, YouTube is the right outlet for this, per se. It's going to be kind of weird. We'll see. Um, I think nobody knows about it. Hilariously. Um, right, so today's rope lesson is pretty basic. Uh, last rope lesson was also pretty basic, but this one is going to be about actually tying knots instead of how to manage rope itself. So I've slightly adjusted the camera so that it is possibly less uh, disorienting because before I had it pointing at a strange angle this way and now it's pointing at an angle that way. Also, I have to act with my hands. Ugh stuff like that because that's the only part of me that you can see uh, so we'll we'll see about that um, right uh, for this sesh I'm gonna be using this cotton rope which we talked about last time as being very easy on the hands and not very messy uh, I have our old friend the manila rope in a, in a bag because it caused a big mess. It's a big, it's a good outdoor rope, not a good indoor rope. I had to do some cleaning up of my work area to get this uh, after the last one. Um, great. So why don't we start? Today's lesson is three basic building blocks from which you can build all sorts of knots that will enhance your daily lives. Well, maybe not daily lives, but let's say weekly, monthly, or occasionally enhance your lives. Um, <clears throat> uh, I love just touching the rope. Uh, that's why it's called the rope grope, after all. The first thing on our list is uh, something called a half hitch. What is a half hitch? It's when you well, do you do this with the rope? Uh, you, you just like cross it over once, and then that's a half hitch. It sounds dumb, but that's what a half hitch. It's very hard to define, and I'm going to show you some knots that use it, and then you'll say, "Oh, well, that makes no sense." And maybe it won't. Maybe it will. But that's a half hitch. The other piece of terminology is called a round turn, where you take the rope and you go around something once, and then you go around again. Where you go around, like so, the three round turns. Um, combined with half hitches, this is a good way of getting some strength out of a um, out of a rope or out of a knot. If you want to strengthen it up, you wrap it around some more times. This may not be obvious, but it might be obvious. Um, so I made something fairly strong here, even if it you know won't hold unless there's tension on it. But that's a round turn. What's the third one? Well, I forget, but we'll figure it out. So that is a thing. Why don't we start off with something called a round turn and two half hitches. And for this, I'm going to use a kettlebell. Kettlebell? I don't know. Thing. What the hell is a kettlebell? Yes, kettlebell. That's the, that's the word. I had to look it up. Uh, could be a ball, but it's... Uh, it's nice and sturdy, it won't move around, and it weighs pounds. So what is a round turn and two half hitches? Well, why don't we do exactly what it says? Let's make a round turn and then make another one. So that's, uh, actually this is two round turns. It, I don't know, it's like one complete thing. It's, it's two full turns, okay? So there's our round turn and then two half hitches. Half hitches can be tied around like a, a thing, like a, I'm using this kettlebell, or you can tie it around rope, which is done actually quite a lot. So the, this is what we're gonna do. Two half hitches. The first one is, that's a half hitch right there. That doesn't look like much, but it's a half hitch. And the other half hitch is um, one on the end of the inside of this loop and one on the outside. Then you go on the outside of the loop and 
you go around and you come from underneath if you're looking at it this way and uh, tighten it that way. So there is probably the least creatively named knot ever. It's two, it's a round turn and two half hitches. The half hitches are tied on the standing end, which is the end that you don't really move when you're working with it. The working end is this thing that we used to actually tie the knot and then the round turn was around the thing that we're fastening to. And this is actually a pretty good way of securing a rope to um, something if you want it to be slightly adjustable because it is an adjustable knot. Because um, two half hitches by itself, if you put it under a lot of load, will slip. It's not a very stable knot. Let me show you that. So just two half hitches on its own. Get rid of that extra turn. So once again, two half hitches, you go inside the loop once like this. And something to note about half hitches is that if you pull them, they don't go out of shape. You can pull them out and then they just sit there. And then uh, you go around the top and you come up from underneath. It's gonna feel unnatural, but there you go. And there's our two half hitches. Note that the uh, two ends come out on opposite sides of the rope. Uh, so there you go, but uh, it's not very stable and it's kind of sort of coming apart. Uh, it, especially this is a very smooth, plasticky surface, so of course it's going to slide rather easily. And this being a rather, you know, nice and soft rope, it's not going to hold. But uh, I was only pulling it with like very little effort and it still slid. Um, you know, with any amount of force, it's going to just sort of instantly cave in like that. So you would want something more like wrapping it around this thing some more with an extra round turn. Or how about this? This is something called, because if you do the extra wrap, then adjustability gets kind of hard because this makes it so that it doesn't want to slide as much. And that becomes more obvious on a rough thing like a tree with a rough rope. It doesn't want to slide like this. This is low friction environment, but the more friction you have around this thing, the less you're going to be able to adjust it. So fewer turns. You want something actually adjustable. And we get to something called a taut line hitch, which does not have an extra turn around this, I don't even know what the hell we're going to call this, oh, the thing, a stick. Let's call this our stick. All right. So this is a knot that I really like because it's got lots of uh, applications and it's super easy. So just like we tied the two half hitches, we're going to go inside the loop once, but this time we're going to go inside the loop again. Remember wrapping rope around things extra times does more strength stuff. That's, that's the, well, that's one of the rules. And then, uh, finish it off just like the uh, the two half hitches. You come on the outside of the uh, of the loop, you go over top, and you come up from below and push it through and there you go. And that rhymed for some reason. Anyway, you should have a knot that looks like this. It has an extra turn on the inside and the ends come out opposite sides of this crossing bit. And that is a, uh, a good knot. I can put way more force on this even with our super low friction. I can't actually make that slide. This is really good for tightening and keeping it that way. Really good for that. And it's more adjustable because there's less friction on here. All the friction is happening on this standing end. Right? Right, cool. Um, what else can we tie with the uh, the half hitches? Well, we've tied it around rope. Why don't we tie it around our stick? Yeah, I like that idea. Let's tie it around our stick. So here's what they call the clove hitch. The clove hitch is going to look very familiar because we just did two half hitches. But you're going to go <clears throat> around once like this. You're going to cross over the uh, standing end, which is this thing, you're going to come up from below and you're going to stay on this side of, of it. You're not going to touch this at all and hide it so that we don't see it. 
and I'm going to come up and underneath itself again. So I made another, this is a half hitch here, and this is a half hitch here. So it's actually, it's two half hitches, but it's tied around um, a stick instead of another rope. And then that's called a clove hitch. And that's a very useful knot for, actually, I don't know, um, making a f small fence or something. You can string this, you know, have another stick here, 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 and you can keep tying them uh, and put them in the ground and make like a thing, but who cares about that? Um, it's generically useful for just tying stuff to a stick, tying a rope to a stick. It does slide. Um, but it's pretty tight. It's pretty good. It, it also is pretty easy to untie. You just sort of work it apart and it just sort of pops out of shape like that. What else can we tie with half hitches? Well, we can do that knot that everyone uses on like their zippers and stuff. Let's tie uh, the call lark's head. Traditional way of tying a lark's head, right, is you go around with the loop and then you take the two ends and you stick them in like this. And that's a lark's head, right? You've seen this before. It's the easiest knot ever. It's just two half hitches where the two ends come out the same side, right? Let me show you that again. Let's tie it like the clove hitch, I think. If you. Instead of going, uh, you go around once, you make a half hitch, but instead of going back around the same direction, you reverse direction and you come up the other side and down through itself and you get a, uh, a lark's head. It's literally the same thing if you reverse direction on the way out and you can keep doing this and you can make, uh, uh, what do they call it, macrame? interlocking lark's heads like this, reverse direction, underneath itself, reverse, you see the point, it starts to become decorative after a while, oops, oops, decorative knot, oops, um, so that's, you know, half hitches, you just keep tying them and stuff until something happens. What if you didn't reverse direction? Well, you get a different kind of decorative Thing. I don't even know what to call this any macrame. What if you don't use that stupid macrame rope knot stuff? You use something else. Is it still macrame? I don't know. Is that paracording? Is it just whatever the rope is made out of? I don't know. Let's do clove hitches until our arms fall off. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to use a short standing end because I want to use more of this uh, this way. Let's do a clove hitch. Oh dear, the clove hitch, can we do this? Yeah, we can. If we don't reverse direction, then you get these crossings over top of the knot that go up in a spiral. And you get this cool spiral pattern. This is usually done around other rope so it's much smaller in diameter. Oh, look, decorative half hitches until our arms fall off. There you go, you get the idea. Oh, oh boy. I'm gonna introduce you to a knot that you may already know but may not have thought very much about. It doesn't require a stick. This one, you take your uh, you take your rope, and you make uh, just like we did two half hitches. You do one half hitch, so this could be called the one one half hitches. Uh, but then you just stop, right? Uh, it looks like a stupid knot. It doesn't do anything. Well, if you pull it, you be, you get an overhand knot. It's it's an overhand knot. It's it's a pretzel knot. Everyone can tie this knot. Everyone. This is the first knot that you ever tied. You took a rope, and you made a loop in it and you went through and then you made an overhand knot. You can also do crazy tricks like, uh, I don't know if, no, I can do this anymore, but where you try and throw the throw a overhand knot, you do this and then toss it and I can't do it anymore. Fart. Um, anyway, it's like the easiest knot in like literally the entire world. 
Um, then you probably got more creative and you went through the knot a couple more times like this. You're like, oh, well. And then you made a big mess because this knot is very hard to get out once you pull it tight and then you were screwed. Uh, but you felt really proud of yourself. Well, maybe you did if you tied a knot like that. A knot like that has a couple different uses. Let me go through that just a little slower for you. Um, taking a, remember I said going around stuff with rope is going to be a theme. Well, if you go around a bunch of times like this, that is a very hard knot to untie. But what if you didn't pull it tight around emptiness here? What if there was something inside? Well, for that, I have to introduce you again to the stick. That's a terrible, terrible thing for this. This is used a lot in cooking for trussing up dishes, meats for roasting. It's something called a blood knot. It's used with tiny little suture ropes. Actually, I need a smaller cord. Why don't I use some of this paracord? I'm not gonna bother fusing it, because I don't have time for that. I don't have time for fuse. Remember my rope knife? Oh, it's so cool. We're gonna use a slightly thinner rope that hopefully you can still see. So I'm gonna go around our stick, let's cross over, and I'm gonna go around it like three times. One, or this thing, three times. Three, right. So that, that alone won't do anything for you. That there is just, who cares? Um, so what you do is you tie another one on top of it. Tie, you just go over on top of it and make another tie. And then this thing is called the blood knot. And this is a terrible rope because it is the slipperiest rope ever, ever made. Also, it's too thick, but um, <clears throat> That's a blood knot. If I had better uh, rope and a bigger stick, if I had a bigger stick, a bigger stick, actually that probably is impossible because the height from the camera down to the table is not big enough to accommodate it. We might have to truss up some meat sometime for roasting to accomplish that with some twine and a bird. But that knot is eerily similar to a different knot that is much more common called the square knot. The square knot is a dumb knot, but a very basic one that lots of people know, especially if they're in the scouts, they have to learn it um, if they you know, want to do anything. As a scout, is you're uh, required to, to know it. I'm going to use the larger rope for this square knot. It starts out just like the overhand knot. Anyone can do that, right? Well, cool. So you go around once. All right, there's your, uh, your overhand knot, very simply. And instead of going around a bunch more times like it, we did with the blood knot, we're going to stop and we're going to go and make another overhand knot like this. All right. This is just half hitches in disguise, people. All right, here are some features of the square knot. The square knot has two of these things on top of each other. All right, the ends on each side come out the same side, like this. You wanna see something even more spooky? Let's pull the two ends here apart. What do we get? Well, uh, we get two half hitches in a lark's head formation on one of the standing ends, which you can pull it apart and then undo the knot. That's how I undo stubborn square knots. Um, how do you achieve this miraculous piece of engineering in rope? Well, uh, one of the keys is you do your first uh, thing. You do your first knot, overhand knot. And uh, there are two ways the second part of this can go, and it's gonna depend on uh, how you tied the first one. This one on my right, this end, comes out the front. This end comes out the back. That means that when I do the next knot, the crossing 
should happen with this one in front because it came out the front and this one in back because it came out the back. Once you've crossed them correctly, there's only one way to complete the knot, so you can just go ahead and do that. And that's a square knot. If you do it improperly, you will get something terrible. So this came out the front, I'm going to cross it behind. And then I'm going to tie it, and it's going to come out looking all wonky and crap. And like a big frowny face, because the ends go down like that. That's no good. They call that a granny knot, but a granny knot is any knot that's tied almost correctly, but not quite. It's all wrong. Hmm. Square knots. What are square knots even good for? Square knots are good for tying ropes together, kind of, sort of, but not really. If uh, you put too much weight on them, they'll just fall apart. And then they're useless. Um, I don't know, they're good for tying around stuff? Who knows? Um... Uh, so square knots. I had something else in mind. Um, oh yeah, if you want to get decorative with square knots or granny knots, you can do them around things. What do I mean by that? Well, every knot is three-dimensional. I'm going to tie the square knot again just so you can see. Every knot has three dimensions. There's the, uh, the flat representation that you may be able to see this way. But what if I turn it like this? Well, you get, um, that looks vaguely dirty. Um, if I push these apart, you get a, a hole. So there's a hole here that you can put something in and then you can tie square knots around that thing. Why don't we do that real quick? Um, forget how to do this. I forget how to do this. Let me see. Try to reverse engineer this. Ah, screw it. It's decorative, whatever. It's another macrame thing. Knots exist in three dimensions, that's all you need to know. Uh, let's do a something, a variation on the square knot that makes a lot more decorative stuff and also it's called a bend for some reason because it's used... Ah! Bends are used to join two ropes together. So a square knot is uh, also used to join two ropes together sometimes. I don't know if it's technically a bend. It might be. So square knot looks like this. It's all that perfect symmetry. I love it. Uh, what if we sort of started to mess with it? Uh, that's no good. That's no good. If I also did... Oh, oh no, I've ruined it. That's all. That's no good. A Carrick Bend is what happens when you do sort of what I just did, but you tie it properly. So let's take one end here. This is going to be our working loop, or standing loop. I don't know. It's going to sit there and not and just lie down and and deal with it. I'm going to take my working end, I'm going to come up from behind, I'm going to lay this flat against the loop so that you have something to guide you later. You go in this crossing here, like that, and then I'm going to go underneath. That's kind of sort of the square knot, isn't it? But not really. Not at all, because the ends do crazy things. Similar, though. And then you pull it tight, and the ends should sort of pop up. Or down, I don't know. Uh, let's examine the formation here. We have uh, this end comes and makes a, uh, a fast hold on this um, this end here. And this end, if you look, uh, rotate it, it's doing literally the exact same thing on the other side. Good. These two are holding each other together. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the middle, there's some sort of crazy linkage going on. Very nice symmetrical knot. And uh, it's a good bend. Unfortunately, it's also rather difficult to, uh, to take apart. 
you can sort of take these loops and push them down and then that tends to loosen them. But again, remember with all of these ropes, untying them is easy because this is cotton clothesline and cotton is very slippery and very soft, very easy to work with. All right. Ah, I remember what I was going to do, a barrel knot. A barrel knot is that knot we already tied where we go around a bunch of times. We go in here. We go and loop it a bunch of times. And we make a loop, and if you pull it tight, you'll notice that it tends to spiral in on itself. And a couple, so I, I looped it like two or three times, and it made like three full revolutions around itself when I pulled it tight. It looks like a barrel if you do a lot of these. Um, barrel knot. So it's a bunch of half hitches that pull tight to do this thing. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, but there's a more, let me show you the more correct way to tie it so that you get sort of a better idea of what's going on here. A barrel knot is standing end, sits there, working end, goes and does all the work. Um, I think. Let me show you on my fingers. Lay the rope on my fingers. I take the end, I start wrapping. How many wraps do I want? I don't know. Just go until I run out of rope, I guess. A few times. When I'm done, I can take this end and stick it. I have to keep the everything in, in check. Notice I have this loop at the end. I want to take this rope, this working end, I want to stick it underneath all those loops and in into the one I made at the end there with that. And that makes a big old barrel knot, which is then you have to tighten it and that's going to be a pain, but that's literally the same knot that we just did. So we're making a bunch of half hitches and then connecting them behind all of them. It goes in like this. And that's going to be very annoying to untie, so I'm not going to do that. So, uh, uh. Remember I said that bends are useful for joining uh, ropes together, right? Well, what if we used two, uh, what do we call it? two overhand knots to do this? Instead of, uh, well, we kind of did, didn't we? We made two overhand knots <clears throat> like this on top of each other. That didn't work out so well, or at least I don't think it works out very well. I think it's stupid. But what if we put them elsewhere? What if we tied the overhand knots around the other pieces of rope? What you get is this cool sliding knot called a fisherman's bend or something, fisherman's knot, I don't know. Let's work on one side at a time here. Take this, and go around and make a, uh, an overhand knot around the other rope. Do the same thing on the other side. Go around My left hand is less dexterous than my right hand. And inside there. So we have two overhand knots. And then if you pull them together, they tighten up very nicely. And that's not coming out anytime soon. If you want to undo it, you have these two ends. You can just pull them and undo the, the knots. It's not so bad. With uh, stronger, crazier, less soft and slidey rope, you may have to employ uh, tools to help you get those knots apart. You can use one of these dangerous looking uh, velociraptor spikes. It's called a marlin spike. I guess because marlins have a big thing on their nose. Right. Um, uh, people are making comments on this, so... Uh, just making sure I'm not missing anything. Um, right, you can also, of course, go around a few more times. What if I didn't do an overhead knot? What if I did, uh, you know, one of these crazy barrel knots? No, I don't want to do that. That's dumb. Or do I? What if I went around a bunch of times and then back through? Ah, whatever. You get the point. 
you go around a few more times instead, and then you make a new knot, and then it's yours. You can you can have it, you can do whatever you want with it. The more times you go around, the stronger it is. Also, the harder it is to, uh, to untie. Whatever. What's next? What, what else can we do with just the uh, overhand knot and uh, the half hitch? I don't know. Uh, oh, I know what we can do. We can do a Turk's head. The one of the easiest Turk's heads to tie starts out as an overhand knot. What is a Turk's head? A Turk's head is something <clears throat> you may have seen before. Here's a really big one. It's uh, it's like infinitely looping weave that you can tie in rope. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to tie that exact one for you, actually. And it starts off with uh, uh, an overhand knot. And it starts off like this. Oh, that doesn't look like an overhand knot, does it? I'm sorry. Um, nope, that's that's a figure of eight. Nope, we're going to have to start with an overhand knot. We have to start somewhere. Baby steps. Let's start with an overhand knot. I'm not going to tie that exact one. That's too complicated. That's that's a figure of eight. This is an overhand knot. It's tied around these two fingers. Now that's not very cool or anything. Uh, but what I can do is I can keep going. I can tie a barrel knot, basically. Until the ends meet up. Oh, but that sucks too. That's not very interesting at all. Or is it? Now, if I follow this other strand here that we started with, staying on exactly the same side, we're going to get our first Turk's head. The probably, aside from the one strand Turk's head, which doesn't count because it's just wrapping a rope around a thing a number of times, uh, we are going to get our first Turk's head of two strands. Mm, so there's that. Benefit of a two strand Turk's head is that it takes almost no time at all to tie, which is cool. Just keep going. Making sure to stay on the same side of the rope as I go around. If I cross, then it's ruined and it will look like garbage. I'm very careful not to over tighten the strands. Uh, okay, we're almost done. Going in there. And that's a Turk's head, technically. It's a uh, a repeating weave of two strands like that. If you uh, cut these ends off and bound them up in the back, you'd never be able to tell. You can put it around something or what have you. It's kind of crappy, but that's something else you can do with just an overhand knot. You follow it through a few times, but that's basically what it is. So I hope you've learned that the overhand knot and the half hitch and the round turn can be very, very useful. You can do them around rope. You can do them around other things, like sticks, kettlebells, trees, birds. I do mean that literally. Birds, pigs, anything you want to eat, roast, whatever. You can do them around those for trussing. I should show off a truss, but I don't have anything to truss. Or do I? I have something I can truss up. I'll truss up this Persona Q case. It's all slippery and stuff, so that might not be the best idea. I should do a pillow, but I don't have one. I sleep on rocks, so I don't have a pillow. Um, right. Let's start off with uh, a truss. So this is my bird that I'm going to eat eventually. It's going to be really delicious, but uh, what you have to do with the bird or the roast of any kind. Let's say it's a never mind. It's a it's a pork loin, which means it's one of those cylindrical cuts of meat that's about this big. 
um, and you have to like tighten it up for roasting or something. So what we're going to do first is uh, is tie a, a overhand knot here. All right, we're going to keep it all tight and stuff, and then we're going to go down an inch or so, and we're going to go around the back of our our loin. We're going to go in there and that's another half hitch and then we're gonna go I don't know I went this way it doesn't really matter go around the back again like that some more and you see what we're doing here we're making a truss and we're going down another inch or so to the end of the loin and we're gonna do that now if this was all tight and this was actually a a roast for delicious meat satisfaction, then uh, we would, you know, sort of, I don't know, it's probably a good way to finish this off, but I don't have enough space. But this is another thing that half hitches are good for trussing up meat for barbecuing, like you might have done today for the America holiday of 4th of July, celebrate great memorial times. No, 4th of July is on the 4th of July. I'm so sorry. Um, right, there's another thing. What else can you do with half hitches? Oh, I know. You can do something called a, a timber hitch. A timber hitch. What is that? It's used for hauling big logs. This is not a big log, but it's going to be our, our stick. Or maybe our log now, I don't know. The timber hitch is like the easiest thing to do ever. Um, oh... Uh, you go around, <clears throat> I'm sorry, that's probably off camera. You, uh, remember we did the two half hitches earlier? Well, instead of going around the standing end, we're going to come back around and go around the working end. Oops, just do this a bunch of times. Just doesn't matter, be sloppy. It's cool. And then you just sort of tighten it up like that. And now, going around the thing a bunch of times has helped us yet again. So long as we put the force on it in this direction. And this is a timber hitch. You put this around a log, all this friction means that this loop is never going to come out ever unless you want it to. And you put a lot of pressure on this and you're carrying a heavy log, it's not going to break. The rope is going to break before the knot will. If you want more stability, you can come down further in the log and tie a half hitch. And, uh, well, there you go. That keeps this perfectly straight, but it also gives you, like, more stability here. So you tie this in the rear end of your log, and you tie this towards the front or in the middle, and you just sort of haul it around. Or this in the middle, this in the front. Depends on the size of the log. Anyway, that's, that's real good. That's a good knot right there dead easy to tie easy to take out once you're done with it because it's just half hitches um, <clears throat> uh, people are whining about how I'm having a crisis uh, no people keep asking me for this rope rope stuff I don't know I like tying knots <clears throat> I know how to tie a lot of them so I figure yeah why not just touch some rope on camera and uh, Stroke its supple contours. Oh, man. Well, I think I've about exhausted my repertoire for knots that can be tied with just those things. But we've learned a few important knots. We've learned about uh, my favorite one, the taut line hitch, which I'll just do one more time. Because I like it so much. It's the knot that I use when I'm, say, securing furniture on top of my car. Um... You go around one of those things that the little piton or whatever, I don't know what the hell they're called, things in your car that you use to tie stuff down. You, you know, come around it and you, you want to tighten it or something. Or you're in the moving truck and there's like those slats on the side of the truck, right? You're supposed to use with bungee cords, but bungee cords don't work like that. So you have to use rope instead. So you, you, you do this. You put this around. This is our slat of wood on the side of the truck. 
And this goes out to your piece of furniture, your sofa or your TV or whatever you, you put out there. And this, you come up, you cross over with John Edwards. Uh, you come inside the loop like this, so there's one half hitch around the standing end. And you come around again for more stability. And you come on the outside. You go over the top and you come up from below and you, uh, you can tighten it like that. And then that will stay at least until you get to your destination. If you are traveling over long distances, I highly recommend that you periodically check any knots you tied when you stop for gas or food or anything. Make sure nothing has shifted, especially if you care about fragile things. Okay. Um, so that's, that's that in a nutshell. So... Uh, I've been tying half hitches all night, but half hitches are great. Love them to death. They have a million uses. They're the building block of a billion basic knots. If you count the overhand knot as a variation on the half hitch. Uh, this has been uh, Kung Fu Jesus, alternately known as Space Cop, alternately known as um, that fucker on the internet. And uh, it's been a pleasure tying knots for you with the rope group. I'll be back whenever I feel like it. Um, or, you know, just around. Uh, my goal is to try to teach rope reasoning so that you can use the rope the way that you need to use it and not the way that, oh, what that knot that I need to know for the thing that does the, the thing. Well, no, if you want to tie a rope around something in a specific way, you can just sort of tie something that'll work by wrapping it around a few more times. That generally is perfectly all right. I had an idea for a future video. This is all fun and games, right? This is like a this is like a magic uh, uh, impress the digitation close up mat, right? So you cards on here, you know. I got a like a pack of cards, uh, you know, like uh, you know, dealing uh, face down. Um, you know, pick a card. Um, but I thought maybe it would be better if I went out into the woods with, uh, with a GoPro or something. And then I had like a bird's eye view of me doing woodsman things with rope instead of simply doing it in the comfort of my warm home. And that's an idea. And there are, there are woods that I can do that in around my, well, within driving distance, at very least. I don't live in a desert, um, so I could easily take a large contingent of rope and go in the woods and, and start slogging around and building things. So I thought that might be something cool to do. Um, if you, uh, if you want to see that, uh, please let me know in a comment section on the video, I guess, somewhere, and we'll see what we can do about that. Thank you for watching, and of course, through the beauty of video, if anything you didn't understand, uh, if I showed you anything you didn't quite understand it, you have the power to go and rewind and, uh, and watch it again. Also, other people do things on YouTube as well. So if you look up the name of the knot that I said at the time, you can go search for it and find someone who has done an infinitely better job at explaining it and, and, and tying the knot uh, than, I, than I have. So with that, I'm signing off. Thank you for watching, and good night.